today we're going to continue our series on Python and we'll learn about what truth is in Python and how to compare values. We're going to spend the whole time in the Ripple today, so if you don't already have a Python Ripple uh, at your disposal, you can start one if you're using Docker with docker run dash dash rm dash it python colon 3.5, and this will actually just start one by itself. So the thing we want to really look at today is how we can compare two things. This happens quite a bit. You want to say, like, is A greater than B? Is B equal to my specific number that I want? And later on, we're going to base a lot of what goes on in our programs on these comparison results. So today we need to learn how exactly we can compare objects and what it looks like when we get those comparisons back. So the first one is we're going to say the equals operator, it's or the equivalence operator, and that is one. You do something like one equal equal one, and it'll give you true, or if you say two equal equal one, it'll give you false. These two things right here, true with the capital T and false with the capital F, these are the Boolean operators in Python. Uh, other languages could use true with a lowercase t and f, or false with a lowercase f, or even some languages go off and have odder things like yes and no. But in Python, it's capital T and lowercase, or capital F. So if you compare two things and they're equal, yeah, you'll get this true or false value. You can also compare that they're not equal. Like you want to you want to know if one is not equal to two, then that actually is true, right? So it'll it'll say true. Is one not equal to one, and that is false. We're gonna quickly go through the rest of these mathematical comparison operators, and these are the same ones you would use if you were saying uh, two is less than three, and three is greater than or equal to five, even though that's false. So they actually work out just like that. So two less than three will give you true. Uh, three is greater than two will give you true. And then if you want the equals portion, you just take what we have right there and you do two is less than or equal to three. Three is less than or equal to three will give you this. And then four is less than or equal to three will obviously give you false. We can also compare things that aren't numbers. Numbers are not the only thing that a uh, that can be compared. So if you compare strings, you'll get things like is a equal equal to one, a, and that is true. And you can actually even do some weird comparisons, although these aren't really necessary, and that is a equal equal one. That, that should always be false. That's good. And you can even do the greater than or less than comparison on, on strings too. So is a less than b, and that's true. B is, you know, higher up the food chain, if you will, in, uh, in the string. So this sort of comparison here is actually called an orderable comparison. So if you can arrange things based on their values from like biggest to smallest or greatest to least, then um, you can use these kind of operators, which leads us to another thing. You can't compare all things, though. So if we try to do A is greater than 1, we'll actually get an error here that's a type error saying unorderable types. String is not comparable to int. So you can't compare everything, and this is a potential thing, and you can run into in your programs later if you're trying to compare two variables, which we'll get into uh, next week. But this is one way that things aren't comparable. Starting back from the top, we're going to move away from mathematical comparison operators uh, because those are actually pretty easy to remember to what are called logical operators. And these actually have keywords in Python. So you'll see the words and, or, and not show up quite a bit. To explain these, we're actually going to use true and false by themselves. So true and false will return false. False and true will return false. And the way the AND works is normally what happens is to get a true out of an AND operation like this, you have to have both sides be true. So with the false side of things, it, what'll, or if there's a false, that means that it found a false in either of these. 
and it actually goes from left to right. So and will return the first false, or it'll turn the the object on the right actually, which will be the tr the true here. So if we have true and true, it'll be true. You can compare more than just true and false using logical operators because everything has a certain amount of truth to it. So 0 and 1 will return 0, which, based on the rules we kind of set up here, is if they're both true, you should get the one on the right. That means 0 is falsy. So 1 and 0 will return 0 again because it's still false, but 1 and 2 will return 2 because they're both true, so we'll get the one that's on the right-hand side. This might seem a little bit weird, but there are quite a few different things in Python that actually come out to being false, but most things are true. And if you want to know whether or not the object you're working with evaluates to true or false, you can use the bool function, which means you know, make, make a boolean out of this object, and you can pass something in. So what is the boolean of a string called a is going to be true. How about just an empty string, though? That's going to be false. So empty string would would have like be the thing that's returned if you care, compared an empty string and something else moving on to the or operator or works exactly the opposite to and so if we say false or true it gives us true if we say true or false it gives us true so in order to get false we have to have false or false and so what it does in the same way that uh, and return the first falsy value or return the object on the right or will return the first truthy value or it will return the object on the right. So going back to using one or um, or zero here you'll have one and zero or return zero zero oh, whoops sorry we fell back and did ands for a second one or zero will give you one zero or one will give you one and then if you do something else, like so if you did zero or false, it would actually give you false because it gives you the one that's on the right-hand side. Only one more uh, operation to go here, and that is the not keyword, um, which is actually unlike or and and, you don't have to take two sides to a not. There's only one side to a not. So that is, you say not false, it's going to be true. Not true is false. And you can see these as sentences they're pretty uh, pretty self-explanatory if you just read it out like English but uh, obviously not string a um, if we think about this we know that string a when we did it up here with this bool was true so we would think that this would evaluate to not true and give us a false and that's what it does so you can actually think of not as the equivalent of taking whatever you would get from bool this function up here and just swapping it so we just went over booleans, comparisons, and logical operators, and these might seem pretty easy or not super useful right away, but we're going to be using these a lot. Um, our programs are going to be entirely based on values that come in if they, they meet the needs that we expect them to or if they're just way off the wall. So we have to be able to, to compare things in order to know how to do the right thing when we're writing uh, full-blown programs. And even the and, or, and not, the logical operators, might seem a little bit like, oh, who's ever going to use that? But there's some neat things that you can do based on how these function. So 1 and 2 would give you 2. That means that uh, you can use the first part to check and see if something's true. And if it is, then return the, the right-hand side. So you can do some, some neat things with logical operators. I hope you liked today's video. Uh, let me know what you thought. And if you have any other topics you'd like to, to see me go over, uh, if you could like, share, and subscribe, I would really appreciate it. Um, and let me know how you're doing. If you're following along with this Python stuff or if you were doing anything on the Docker side of things, just let me know uh, how it's going for you. I'd love to hear it.